Are you tired of not understanding words in English? Are you tired of not understanding conversations in English? Are you tired of not understanding anything in English? Then this listening series is for you. Today, we look at the Tiger King. Hi, my name's Damien and I'm the sledgehammer that smashes down English language barriers. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to keep up to date with all my latest English lessons. Today, I'm here to help you become a better listener. I'm going to teach you my ultimate English listening routine. Oh, and make sure you stay to the end because I'm also going to give you a quick demo of one of my favorite tools for English language learners to practice their English. It's going to blow your mind, or in this case, your ears. Okay, before getting into the ultimate listening routine, I'm going to review some metaphors that will help you better understanding what happens when you listen in English. The three metaphors are the greenhouse, the garden, the jungle. Let's say that again, greenhouse, garden, jungle. If you want to watch my full video about this, just click on the link above, but I'm going to give you a quick review now. Let's hit the greenhouse. In the greenhouse, words are separated into their individual pots. They're not influenced by other words around them. These are the citation or perfect form of that word. So for example, when you look up a word in the dictionary, it's in its citation form. That's the greenhouse. Moving to the garden. Sentences in the garden are much like the kind of sentences you find in an English course books. Words come together, but it's in a nice, orderly, rule-based way. Just like the flowers you see in a garden bed. Welcome to the jungle. Now, in the jungle, everything's messy and unruly. You don't know where one word starts and another word begins. So in normal English conversation, it can become quite hard to follow what someone says because there are no rules. Everything is just a big mess. Okay, now let's apply these metaphors to the ultimate English listening routine. You'll start to get a better understanding of what I mean by the greenhouse garden and the jungle. Step one is watch a trailer of a popular movie or video. Now back in early 2020, everybody was watching the Tiger King. Now it's your turn. So I want you to pause the video, click on the card above and watch the trailer for the Tiger King without subtitles. And then when you're finished, I'll be waiting for you here. Two, listen to an audio sample from that trailer. I'm going to play it three times and you need to get a paper and pencil and just write down what you think you hear. Okay, go get that paper and pencil and let's get started. You're going to have to kill me to shut me up. You're going to have to kill me to shut me up. You're going to have to kill me to shut me up. Step three, we analyze what's happening in the jungle. So he said, they're going to have to kill me to shut me up. Let's say it a bit faster. They're gonna have to kill me to shut me up. Hmm, how'd you go? Pretty hard, right? Anyway, let's have a look and find out what's happening in the jungle. Okay, starting with they are, it sounds like they're and it is the contractive form of they are. Moving on to going to, it becomes gonna, which is a contraction you probably know about already. After that, we have huh. Now huh is a very weak sound and it is often lost in spoken speech. 
as in the example of have becoming av. Also, v can become more like f, such as af. And finally, a weak version of to, which sounds like t, links up to have. And this is how we get after. Moving on, we have another weak form of to, which is t. This happens a lot in spoken English to function words and prepositions. You might know the name of this sound, which is the schwa, or I like to call it the lazy sound. Ugh. There's no real physical effort in producing that sound. Then the final sound of shut becomes d, which is shud. After that, me links to up with a y sound, which can happen when two vowel sounds meet. And it sounds like uh, me up, me up. And that's how we get, they're gonna have to kill me to shut me up. Step four, let's do some greenhouse garden and jungle pronunciation. You might be thinking, why pronunciation? I'm here for a listening lesson. Well, pronunciation and listening are very tightly linked. Basically, if you can't physically say a sound, then you can't hear that sound. So let's try and get this line into our muscle memory, which will then help our listening in the future. Okay, let's start with the greenhouse. And remember, we say these words separately. So let's do it together. They're going to have to kill me to shut me up. Moving to the garden. Now we have some linking. They're going to have to kill me to shut me up. Let's try one more time. They're going to have to kill me to shut me up. Finally, the jungle. Now before we do the jungle together, remember the goal is not to speak like you're in the jungle. It's to be able to listen in the jungle. For you, it's probably better to speak in the garden and be easily understood. But sometimes you'll meet people who speak in the jungle and they're not really going to help you out by speaking slower. So you need to be able to listen to the jungle. So let's say it together. They're going to have to kill me to shut me up. They're going to have to kill me to shut me up. They're going to have to kill me to shut me up. Step five, I like to finally mine the script from the video for new vocabulary or phrases. I like to find phrases more than individual words that I can use in conversation. So my top phrase is, it's not every day. Now you use this phrase to talk about something special or something that doesn't happen very often. And, and you wanna you know, highlight it to the person who's listening to you. So for example, I could say, it's not every day you get to meet the president or it's not every day you get an eight in IELTS listening. So why don't you in the comments try to finish that sentence with your own idea. So you want to write, it's not every day, and then you come up with your own idea. Oh, and if you want a complete vocabulary system, remember to buy my book, English Words Unmasked. It goes through all the different steps of setting up your own vocabulary recording system. Bonus tip. So if you're looking for a tool to make watching videos easier in English, then I suggest you just try out language learning with Netflix or language learning with YouTube. This really makes it a lot easier to understand and watch videos in English. Let me give you a quick demo. Okay, here's the tool, uh, language learning with YouTube. Now this is an extension which you download from the Google store. In the description, I'll leave a link so you can download it if you think it's something for you. 
Now, I think this is a really great tool. Once you've downloaded it, you click to turn it on and then you can see it. all the subtitles appear on the side and if we press play, it's not every day. I can show two languages at once. So for example, I'm learning Thai, so I can show English and Thai together. And then I can click and it will show me that word in Thai. I can zookeeper, a zookeeper so went to prison for murder for hire. And down the side, we can find all different parts from the video and play those lines. So if we're interested in the one we just learnt, you're going to have to kill me to shut me up. Uh, we play that. You're going to have to kill me to shut me up. You're going to have to kill me to shut me up. So it just allows you, I think, to get a lot more out of the videos you're watching either on YouTube or Netflix. So yeah, why don't you have a go and um, tell me what you think in the comments. Okay, now you have some great listening tools to help you start smashing English language barriers today. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share and all that other stuff. And I'll see you next time. Listen like a tiger.